The Small Business Show, episode 316 for Wednesday, February 24th, 2021. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we engage in the practice of small businessing together every week here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. And it is a practice, isn't it? It is. It's, con- <laughs> it's a constant uh, uh, cy- trying to get create this cycle of improving and practicing every day to uh, be the best we can be, right? Yeah, I'm not perfect at it, but but they say oh, that no. <laughs> perfect practice makes perfect. So I'm, I'm working on that part uh, of it, perfecting my practice. I, also, yeah. I want to say something to you. Happy anniversary, because ah. last Friday, February 19th, was our sixth anniversary of launching our first episode of this show. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's one of the highlights of my week. I love Same. talking about small business. I could just carry a recorder around with me all the time because I always seem to be talking about it when people ask me questions and stuff. Um, that's, that's awesome. It's been a great six years. I look forward to the, the next six. The next six? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, I've been... Uh, I've been busy lately and I use that word, but I've also been productive, but my time has been massively occupied and, and it, two weeks, three weeks ago, I started on the same day. I started teaching this class at the university of New Hampshire here at the business of podcasting, which is a once a week thing, but it's my first time ever teaching a college class. And also my first time teaching this class, obviously, Uh, So I don't have any experience. I don't know how it's going to go. It's a 14 week class. Obviously I've done quite a bit of prep work, but that prep work is just there so that in the moment uh, when I realize it's not right, I know maybe what else I might have on deck as we, as we craft this class next semester will be fantastic because we'll know what, what, how it goes, but it's been stressful, right? You you know, I mean, understandably and and, yeah. yeah, acceptably stressful, but stressful. So I started that. On February 1st. And also that very same day, I started uh, what's known in the theater circles as Tech Week for a show that I'm currently playing now, a show called Next to Normal. Very difficult score, arguably one of the most difficult scores uh, that exists for a musical. And I've played it before, but still it's, you know, it, it requires a lot of time to prep for, but then also simply requires a lot of time, especially tech week. That means that's the week where you're there every day at the theater playing through the show. Everybody's sort of learning it together. Hopefully people come in knowing their own parts, but still assembling it and finding the way to flow it all together and, and all that. Uh, it just takes time. And so, you know, and, and a lot of reps. So you're just playing yeah. through it a bunch. And so I was thinking as I was getting ready to record today, like, you know, It wasn't until maybe Thursday of last week. So, you know, several weeks into, okay, the show's settled. My class at UNH is settled. And it's like, wait a minute. I've been keeping up with all of my work, but I haven't been like when I'm at the theater, I'm not checking my email as religiously as I normally might, as frequently as I normally might. Right. You know, it's just, I wind up, uh, I wind up putting the phone down and then hours go by and I, and I don't. I don't touch it, which is weird for me, you know, (laughs) like I'm I'm detached in a sense. I've been more detached from work than probably I have been in the last year just because, you know, I haven't been traveling or anything that, that also causes some level of that detachment, you know, and, and I was thinking about how valuable that is. Uh, I mean, it's a double edged sword (laughs) for sure, but you know, there, there is this luxury of exhausting work that allows you, it sort of forces that perspective on, on me anyway, because it forced me to not be as engaged with my businesses as I normally would be. Again, I wasn't letting too much fall through the cracks. There might've been a few things, uh, but you know, I was keeping up with, with things, paying attention, but not engaged as I normally would be. And, and, there's some level of that that's a really good thing, I think. I think so. Yeah. And I think that, you, you know, you, you have talked to, uh, before on the show about, you know, multitasking is kind of a myth, right? And uh, you, you need to be able to do that focus and yeah. manage. I mean, you need a wide bandwidth, but but jumping from task to task like a squirrel is is not the, 
the the way to live your small business life, right? No, it uh, takes time for for my brain to get focused on a task, right? Yeah. And so it, you know, especially if it's a deep task, I think of it as like going into different holes and it's like, well, I could jump from hole to hole, but I'm only going to be able to go a foot in and then I got to get a foot out and go over out. and jump in the next hole. So if I'm 20 feet deep, I kind of want to stay there, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it also is, can, can be... Uh, <laughs> It could teach us that everything doesn't have to happen so quickly, you know, with your other businesses. You don't, maybe you don't have to have that instant response, which we're so, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of conditioned. You know, when I see something pop up, man, I'm like, oh, I got to solve that quick and I'm going to move this or I don't want to miss that opportunity. I got to deal with this. But when you are forced to be, to step away uh, a bit and things still work out okay. Yes. Right? Yes. Then I think that goes a long way to sh maybe showing us that, okay, it, it's okay if I get to things at a certain time or if I allocate, like I, I try to, with my day to break it up into chunks. So like, okay, I'm going to focus on this task or this business, you know, and, uh, from, you know, eight to noon today or whatever. Sure. Well, it's so easy to get interrupted with things that I've supposedly I'm going to work on in the afternoon that it's, it, I, I feel like maybe I'm I'm not as productive in that, you know, that morning chunk of time when I'm jumping back and forth. So, it, but it is a luxury, like you said, to be able to step away. And I would say that that's a, a, a testament to your good uh, set of creating this system that can, can uh, survive and thrive without you having to be into it every few minutes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I mean, it, it, it shows what parts of the system can survive and thrive. And it also yes. highlights the parts that cannot. Right. Like, yeah. and, and that's an right. okay thing. And I think this, you know, I, I, I we mentioned, or I, we talked about at the beginning of the episode that this is a practice. Right. And I know that 10, let's go back 10 years. It probably was even more recently than that, but 10 years ago, I had a system in place that I would keep things sort of moving along but I wasn't paying attention to what fell through the cracks, which parts of the system succeeded, which parts failed when I would detach. And because I wasn't paying attention to that, A, I wasn't fixing it, but also B, I was not realizing that I couldn't just simply detach more. Right. <laughs> right. Like, sure. If, if you're not yeah. aware of what's going through, or if you're not looking for what's failing, then you just think, well, everything's great. And, and over time, of course, it, I proved to myself that that wasn't the case. And I had to step in and really get some things fixed, which is fine. I mean, it's, it's, things are much better than they have been uh, in a very long time. Yeah. But last week it was like, okay, when I finally dug back in, I spent several hours on Thursday morning, just kind of cleaning through my inbox and, and all other, you know, tasks oriented things that I have. And it was like, okay, so this survived, this did not. Okay, great. Like I can fix it. I mean, it's, you know, at most it was 10 days from when I began this, this detachment. Right. And it, it was a semi detachment to be fair and nothing cratered. Right. The business is still, all the businesses are still fine, but it really was like, you know, a, a learning process of, oh, okay. Uh, this is one thing that I really shouldn't let fall through the cracks. If I'm going to detach I need to delegate this and maybe I need to delegate it even when I'm not detached so that I can do other things for the business. You know, it, it, it's yeah. a valuable, I, I, I really find it valuable. Yeah. It's yeah. I, yeah. I think so too. Uh, and it's funny because when you started talking about this before we uh, hit the record button and I, I found myself a, a little, maybe a shorter window, about five days where I had to go out of town and work on a, a, a vacation rental that we own and I said, you know, I'm going to figure this out. I want to, I want to learn, I wanted to put a new kitchen in, which I know nothing about. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've learned a tremendous amount, just the logistics of making everything happen and getting all this, this place is very rural, um, about an hour from the, you know, nearest, uh, large Lowe's or Home Depot type place. Sure. And yep. so you have to plan things out and deliveries and this and that. And, because it was so all encompassing and it took all my physical and a lot of my mental ability, I, I found myself dis really out of necessity disconnecting as well and not wanting, normally I could go, okay, well, if I had 
this project during the day. I'll, I'll grab my laptop and, you know, in the yeah. evening and I'll yeah. just catch up, but I just couldn't do it. And so, uh, as I mentioned to you, not only did I could, you know, really disconnect, but, uh, I had to grapple with stepping back into things this morning when I finally got back in the office. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Last, last yeah. Wednesday when I left, um, but I can now say I have a whole nother talent, uh, uh, uh part of my talent stack that, you know, whether it'll be useful for me or not, uh, you know, knowing how to install cabinets, a dishwasher, this, this brand new countertops. I mean, all these kinds of things that I, that I learned are great. And I, I know I'll put them to use again. Um, and it makes me feel good every time I look at it. Right. When I go, go up there, or when I have guests up there to that rent the place, but this morning it's like, okay, you know, may, mailbox is just flooded. Nothing urgent. Like you said, I had to kind of, you know, I, I kept touch a bit with a few things, but for the most part, I've set my businesses up now that I can kind of turn things off and on, which mm. I really, it oh, is a luxury. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have, I have a couple of assistants, uh, virtual that, you know, I work with, uh, I've got some deadlines that I always have to meet. I have a, a, a new book about eBay that has to be uploaded by Friday. So it publishes on Monday and so all those things I'm, I can take care of, but uh, being able to kind of turn the customers off with that I'm used to dealing with is fantastic. That's fascinating. And it is a luxury. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, and like to your point, it is really a luxury of uh, exhaustive work. <laughs> what did you call it? Luxury of exhaustive work? Exhausting right? work, but sure. Yeah, exhausting whatever. Work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, it and, is, it, well, it, and that, that yeah. detachment, t doing something, you with the cabinets, me with the theater show, that requires 100% of your focus for... A, a long stretch of time, you know, we are, like you said, you might schedule your, your morning eight to 12, you're going to do a certain thing, but you can be interrupted fairly easily. It's, it's just oh, yeah, you, for right? Sure. Whereas yep. when you're building your cabinets or I'm doing this theater show, I really can't be interrupted. And you, you know, you're, once you're in it, you've got all this stuff going on with your cabinets and everything. You can't just be like, all right, well, you know, let me go take care of this thing for 10 minutes. I'll, I'll just come right back. No, that's, you know, no, we were talking about yes, you're deep correct. in the hole. Like we're a hundred yep. feet deep at that point. So you really can't. And it's rare for me to give myself the luxury of being that deep in any kind of hole. It might happen with programming. Sometimes it might, you know, for me, it might happen with, you know, a gig like that, but it, that forced detachment, I think is really healthy. Um, it is. It, yeah, I, yeah. I agree. And I, I, yeah. And I think that it, uh, like I said, like I said earlier, you know, identifying what things are uh, strong enough to kind of, take care of themselves or you have somebody else delegate it or something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, or things that, wow, you know, this is a weak point that, you know, if it's not making, if it's not working without you constantly being involved in it, you know, then maybe you should reassess how it, how it's not working. How it, yeah, <laughs> and, no, and, it, it's a great, it's a great ability to, you know, to have that, that forced perspective, I guess is, is really what we're talking yeah. about here. And, yeah. and if it's your point about delegating, it's like, okay, well, do I, am I the right resource to be in charge of this? Uh, you know, dirt show, I have to get someone else to take care of it. One of my employees, a contractor, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And, yeah. you know, as a solopreneur, like I am now, uh, I often, am reminded that, you know, your resources are much more limited and, and I have to be way much, much more efficient with my time and some things I just can't do. And I get involved in some project and I start to see those weaknesses that if I'm not tending it, you know, really close, I start thinking, you know, is this really, do I really want to be involved in this project? Yeah. And, and I have, you know, so I think that forced, uh, you know, that detachment, it not only just helps kind of cleanse your brain of the, your day-to-day -day routine, which I hate, you know, getting stuck in a routine is, uh, in, is just not a good thing in no, my opinion. It's, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah. And, yeah. and so being forced to go out, um, uh, I think is great. I, I think so too. I think so too. So yeah, let us know your thoughts on this folks. Feedback at businessshow.co. We'd love to hear what techniques you use to, uh, to break those cycles and identify those cycles, right? Because when you're in them, 
you don't necessarily know off the top, you know, right away. Yeah, I like that. So, yeah. yeah. Let us know. Feedback at businessshow.co. Uh, Shannon, we've got a couple other things to talk about. The next thing that I want to talk about is our sponsor for this episode. If, if we're good with this and that's okay. With yeah, you. let's do it. Absolutely. All right. You know, finding those simple and effective ways to keep our employees engaged and our customers happy has got to be top of mind for us as business owners and managers. And that is especially true and especially challenging when face-to-face -face interaction is limited. So trying to find that way to stand out, what do we do? We go to Uber because Uber for business is our answer, right? Look, we trust Uber as a way to request rides and order meals from restaurants that we love, right? But did you know about Uber's platform designed specifically for our businesses? And here's how it works. Have a hard time getting people to show up or stay engaged in those Zoom meetings or events? Well, with vouchers from Uber for Business, you can add $20 to their personal Uber accounts so that they can easily order meals through Uber Eats before the meeting. This is great, right? Now you, you truly can have a lunch meeting where you're covering lunch and Uber makes it easy. Want to make your customers love your business even more? We love that. Offer them a voucher for a free meal or a ride if they want when they make their first purchase or if they spend a certain amount. Any company can sign up for free and immediately start delivering extra value to the people who matter most to their businesses. I've used these vouchers. I've used them on both sides. In fact, they're super easy to redeem. And right now, Uber for Business is offering companies a $50 voucher credit when you spend your first $200 with vouchers. Go to uber.com slash SBS to learn more. Again, that's uber.com slash SBS for a $50 voucher credit. U-B-E-R, uber.com slash SBS. Terms and conditions apply. And our thanks to Uber for Business for doing what they're doing and sponsoring this episode. All right. So do we have more on this luxury of exhausting work thing? No, tips to share? I, I think okay. we've, we've discussed it, but I, again, it would be yeah. great to get some feedback, uh, listen, you know, hear what, what folks have to say if they like, you know, how, how they use this uh, concept of disconnecting and then what techniques you use to kind of ramp back up when you get back in the, into work mode. I Absolutely. Think that's great. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we have an email here, a little business therapy time, Shannon, from, uh, we'll call this person, Mr. X, uh, who says, should we hire an extra employee when we don't have an immediate need for them? Uh, and, and Mr. X goes on here. I've often heard it said that if a Cracker Jack person, uh, the excuse the old person term comes along, the rock star, if you will, you should hire them and then find a job for them, even if you don't have an immediate specific need. On the other hand, uh, an important productivity to profit ratio is the sales per employee. So if I hire someone new, that obviously changes my ratio in potentially a negative way. So here's and, and Mr. X goes through a few things here, which I like. It's a good little setup. The pros that Mr. X sees, if you hire this rock star, there's a good chance that they'll do something to increase sales themselves and thereby justify their hiring. Since you don't really need them, you can afford to be picky. Don't hire them unless you're sure they are amazing. And then you can feel free to dismiss them if they don't prove themselves within three months, six months. Okay. Uh, another pro, someday you're going to need a new employee anyway. So this way you can hire someone without any timeline pressures. Uh, if you hire them when you don't need them, then when you do, they're already trained up and in place. And you can sort of move them around in the company wherever uh, they need to go. So those are the pros that Mr. X lists. The cons? The most obvious con, of course, cost, depending on how many employees you currently have, you could be significantly increasing your payroll. And do any of your current employees feel intimidated by a new hire, especially if they know you don't need someone? Do they feel as if they're being replaced or, as I call it, pre-placed, right? Bringing on someone and then letting them go. <laughs> uh, the con is uh, another con. There's nothing worse than having an employee who doesn't have work to do and you have to spend all of your time finding things for them. Another potential benefit, if your current staff is good, but not great, is that by simply having this rock star on staff, it may rub off on them and you may find that the rest of your staff uh, upping their game just so that this new person doesn't show them up. As you can guess, this is something uh, I've thought about recently. Mr. X says, I know that I have at least one employee who will be retiring over the next few years. So the idea of taking my time and finding that amazing replacement beforehand is appealing, but 
with a small company, uh, Mr. X says they've only got four employees plus uh, themselves. This would add a fair bit to the payroll in the time before they need to. Also, Mr. X points out uh, that they have another employee who is okay at best. No compelling reason to let them go, but they don't give me a lot of confidence in their long-term contributions. If I already had a new rock star employee waiting in the wings, it would make letting the okay employee go that much easier. So I, I have a lot of thoughts on this, man. You yeah, so do I. Yeah, go ahead. So yeah. Do I. yeah. Well, I, number one, this is a terrific uh, type of, of email or question to send in to the small business show. You know, it's thought very thoughtful that, you know, laying the pros and cons out. I mean, this, the Mr. X is going through this exercise himself, kind of how we're going to talk about it, but it's got, it's just, you know, after writing something like this as a small business owner, you're just way closer to being able to make, I think, a an informed decision, right? Yeah. Even without hearing our our input on it, that first of all. So, I I, I really um, I do love this concept of hiring someone uh, that you come across, and especially I, I've had the position where I've had someone approach me that wanted to work for us. Yeah. That, that, you know, hey, I know about your company. I've heard this. I've followed you guys here. Uh, I, I want to come work for you. These are my, this is my background. What can I do? And I think those types of uh, potential employees have, a, you know, they want to prove themselves, right? Um, and it's a different level of, hey, I'm just, I'm looking for a job and uh, you look like, you know, you're, you're trying to hire somebody. So maybe, maybe I'll make that fit. Yeah. So I think that's a, a huge benefit in mindset. Um, when, if, if you have the luxury of someone approaching you that wants to work, uh, for your, for your business. And, and I, I would not ignore those things. I think that's a, that's a big deal. It is a big deal. I've had that happen before where somebody says, Oh, you, wait, tell me about your business. Oh, I, I would, I would fit in well there. Or I, I think I could yeah. bring something to the table. I want to work there. Right. For some reason they, they say that. And I've had that, I, I've had it go in both directions to be perfectly honest. Um, I, 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 and I've let my share of rock star employees slide by without hiring them. And I've, I've also hired a few over time, in, in, including those in this sort of don't need them, but I'm going to bring them on anyway, because I think that they will help the business regardless. Right. But yeah. to me, the part that I think is worth digging into because I've learned about it the hard way is ask how you think this might change your corporate culture, because clearly You've got something which works and bringing in a rock star, especially if you have some people that in your mind are not rock stars. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and I'm saying that intentionally because uh, they may be rock stars. Like you don't, you, you might you be, may not know, you right? may yeah. not know, or you may have gotten used to them. Right. And yeah. so now they yes. seem okay. Okay. But um, if you do that and especially it, it, your perspective as the business owner is look, I'm bringing in this person that's better than everybody here. I, you will, this will change your company's culture. And, yeah, and I don't think you can say that. I don't, you don't no, know if they're better. That's the, that's the thing. Right. And the question is, will it change your culture in a good way? And I really feel like a lot of this is up to you, the business owner, because I've, I've failed at this in the past. How will you manage this inevitable change to your culture, right? Except that it will happen because in a company where you've got five people, you plus four employees bringing in one other person, that's a significant chunk of your company yeah. that has just changed. So of course the culture is going to be impacted by that person. That's normal. You have to manage this change. So if you let the change happen organically, by giving this new rock star room to be themselves, then it'll either inspire your staff and then your rock star becomes a, a manager sort of by default, right? Or it'll sour the entire culture and then your rock star becomes a cancer, right? And my experience is that the latter, the cancer, is far more likely to happen than the former. And it can take a lot of time for your company to recover from that. Uh, yeah. So letting it happen organically 
is very tempting, especially when you've got somebody that you feel knows more than you about what you want them to do at your business, which is great. Like that it, you're, you're wise as a, as a manager or, you know, a business owner to hire people that know more than you. That's smart. You definitely want to hire a people. And, and that means that they're going to bring in skills that you don't have, but you need, you do need to manage them, even though they know more than you about a certain thing, right? You know more than them about your current business yeah. and the culture of your business. So you have to be really careful. So I, I think you need to manage this with a, a pretty steady hand, not too heavy a hand, but a pretty steady hand. Make it clear to the rock star that your corporate culture is the most important thing. I, I think that's that's a good place to start. And you just know how well their skills are going to fit into your world. But then you have to keep an eye on it because if your rock star gets frustrated by not having the latitude to do what they know is right, that can become cancerous too. So it's a really tough right. balance, but I, but <laughs> this is the part that I think makes or breaks this and no great surprise. It's up to you. It's your fault if they succeed or fail, not theirs. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And I think that, um, you also have to watch there's a there's a little trap here i think if you think this person is the rock star you may and i think i've seen this and i think i've done it too treat them differently than you would maybe your these other employees That's because it. you yeah. have this mindset your bias is that oh this person is just awesome you know and they're a rock star so they're going to do things different and your expectations start to be different and maybe you treat them differently as well and your other employees can believe me they will pick up oh, on they'll that know right well. away right yeah, away of course and so you know i really like this concept of uh that you mentioned organically letting it happen dave but i my take on this is a little different is if if you find this person that you think is good well you know Unless you're hiring like, oh, we need a new VP of sales or uh, we need a new, you know, yeah. uh, head of marketing. That's different. And you tell your people, oh, we're hiring a marketing person. Da, 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 da. Right. They're not going to be your boss or they're not going to. That's that's different. Yes. Uh, but if if you're bringing in someone that you think is going to replace someone, eventually do these kinds of things. Maybe you can find a, diff a, a different way to bring them in. Oh, um, yeah. In, in the sense of, uh, hey, okay, this is great. I think you could do it, but you like to, you know, Mr. X said, they have to prove themselves. So maybe you need to bring them in as a, as a trainee, if you will, and see yeah. how they do in a lower level position. Because I would argue that the people you're not going to have problems in your culture are the ones that don't care what they do. Right. That, oh, sure. I'll start if you're you're in whatever business you're in. I'll start here at the bottom because I want to work. I, I want to learn about all these aspects of the business. And the best way for me to learn about them is to be involved and do this job for a little while. Right. Yeah. Even if even if you're eventually like, hey, man, you could take over this company someday. Great. But if they're not willing to get in the trenches and do the work. I would say that that's a that could be a, a, a problem. So there's some different ways to do it. I mean, we used to have. A terrific intern program. Now, if you have a, a you know, maybe a, it may not have to be a younger person that your your rock star may be. Yep. But if you come in, you could say, "Hey, we have this." Uh, like we had a hundred hour intern program where somebody came in and worked. It was a part time, you know, thing because they were mostly college students. But maybe you can integrate them into some sort of trainee, some sort of intern thing. Number one, just to see if they'll do it and see what their attitude is about it. Um, because if they think they're a rock star and that they're better than doing some of this low level stuff, again, I, I would say you, you need to be a little weary. Yeah. Yeah. Just to be right. clear, I don't think the organic let it happen approach is the right one. I, it, it I know it's tempting because you want to yeah. give these people the freedom to be themselves, but you don't want to do that on day one. I, I like, no, I, I think that's, I, I like your idea of. You know, it's finding some way of having that heavy or steady hand, I guess, on 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 things and bringing them in and and putting them in a box, even if it's not the box that they're going to stay in forever. And yeah, you can forever. Right. You can tell them this is not the box you're going to stay in forever. Oh, absolutely. It, you yeah. can have a plan, but you could also I, I really think especially a small business, four or five employees, getting buy in from other people is really important. 
if you want them to work closely with this person yes. who you think is eventually going to have an important role. So how about asking them to, to interview this person? Mm. How about asking them, Hey, how do you feel if I, this guy, if you trained him, if, if you well, taught him yeah, what, training what you them. do, that's a great you know, idea. And, and, yeah. and work with him. Cause then you're also going to really get some insight into how this person works because if you're coming into a new organization as well to prove yourself, I think you you need to think about how you're going to add value to each other role within the company, right? Each right. employee. How am I going to add? Because you're trying to get these people on your side, right? You're trying to persuade them that, hey, I'm here to help the business, which is going to help you. So teach me everything about your job and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, and and that way, I think if you if you kind of shift it, then you're not thinking the, oh, this person's a rock star. They're going to come in and solve these problems. Well, your employees pick up on that quickly. And I've done that. I've hired a sales manager that I thought was going to take us to another place. And he made some comments to the press that oh. not only alienated uh, a huge chunk of our customers, but alienated every other single person that worked for me. <laughs> and, you know, and this guy didn't last very long. And I had to, you know, step in and say, wow, I made a mistake. And, yeah. and we promoted someone from within because it, I realized it was a better better use of talent. But you might have been able, like handling that differently, bringing that person in, you might have been able to make that person into the the, the employee you thought. I, I, I don't time, know this person, yeah. but but yes, but I, I know that I could have done things differently with with a few hires that I've made where it's like, oh, if I had if I had brought them in the right way, they might have been able to be that person for us. Uh, and yeah, not everybody maybe. like I always yeah. say the first issue with an employee is my fault, right? Because I wasn't managing them correctly. The second issue with an employee, I, well, it doesn't really matter whose fault it is. They got to go. Like if it's not working, it's yeah. not, you know, and maybe it's still me. Well, that's fine, but it, I'm not going to leave the company. So they have to, right? Like that's, yeah, that's kind of how that goes it, for me. Yeah. That yeah. concept, I, I would always tell our managers too. I say, well, when you have to fire somebody, it's our fault. We either hired the yeah. wrong person or we didn't manage and manage them correctly. That's right. Uh, but that's okay. <laughs> you still need to fire them and get, try to get somebody else. <laughs> that's it. You yeah. They still got to go. That stop you. Yeah. 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 They still got to go. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They say your so fault for this. Yes. <laughs> yeah do it, you know, but you know, for this concept, I think that again, this exercise is great laying out the pros and the cons, getting some outside, uh, you know, opinions on things. Some, some folks like us that have, that have done this thing before. Um, and I really love your concept of, of focusing on protecting your culture. I, I think it's okay for people to feel intimidated, but not if it's they're intimidated by somebody that's only worked there for a month. Yeah. Right. Right. It, it's, it needs to happen over time to where someone has proven, you know, we hired Bob because we think Bob's going to be a good addition to the organization. How did it go when you worked with Bob for a, a week, two weeks, a month, two months to, so he could learn about your position and, you know, is, did Bob come out and Bob's just a jerk, you know, and he doesn't want to listen and he's trying to change everything I do. That's not a good there. That is a recipe for disaster. Cause if you want to, uh, you know, move Bob up to where he's eventually going to be the boss or a manager or something, those people have to respect him uh, or her. And, and so they need to earn that trust and they need, and maybe that's the question you could ask them is look, I want you to think about how you would add value to each of my employees positions right now. Ooh. Right? Oh. How would you add value? And so maybe they don't get to to move up in the ranks until they come back in and say, "You know what? Ja uh, you know, Jane in uh receiving or in accounting or whatever, she needs me more resources. She's using a computer that's 5 years old and she's having to do these workarounds or the, you know, the the racks in the warehouse are set up incorrectly. I've noticed that everybody's stretching, doesn't have the right this. So if you can get that person to be seen as adding value to each of these roles, they will naturally and organically embrace this person that, wow, this person really does want to make our job better, not just come in and tell us what to do because it's different, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I, I would look for that value add. How would you add value to each of these, you know, employees? Because, you know, and I like this because you're talking about, the, you know, Mr. X is loyal to his existing employees, whether they're rock stars or not, they've been with him for a while. And you need to look at that and see how we can make them jo their job better because maybe then they can become a rock star. You just don't know. Yeah, you just don't know. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. You gotta, you gotta Great keep, stuff. keep your hand on the, on the keel there, you know, make sure you don't, you don't lose sight of what's going on. I think that's the, yeah. that's the key. But that's it's a great yeah. question. Love talking about this stuff. Feedback at businessshow.co. If you need some business, uh, small business therapy, we'd love to discuss your topic. And uh, we appreciate you listening to us again this week. Yeah. Happy and, anniversary, and Dave. As you saw, we're happy to keep you anonymous and all of that stuff and uh, protect the innocent people that are involved. That you know, We're here to help. We're not here to hurt. So feedback at businessshow.co for sure. That's what I got, man. You got anything else? No. I think it's good stuff. Great topic. Again, happy anniversary. Great six years. I look forward to the next as we move on into better, even better things. Keep living the dream, folks. Keep living that charmed life and uh, keep listening to the show. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. 